Australia is one of the most fire-prone landscapes on the planet. It seems that barely a summer passes when we're not confronted with scenes of towering flames and people scrambling to get out of the way. But lost within this chaos is a hidden threat that can cause widespread devastation far beyond the reach of the fire front. And so, if we only focus on the fire front, we just might be risking missing the forest for the trees. Embers, or firebrands, as they are also known, are burning particles of smouldering and flaming fuels that can be released in their millions by bushfire. These embers can be lofted in the wind and projected far ahead of the fire front, and they can continue to be produced long after the main fire has passed through. And at times, a fire can be producing so many embers that it feels like a blizzard with fire raining down from the sky. And with so many embers being cast over such large areas, firefighters are almost powerless to stop them. And when bad fire weather arrives, bringing high winds, high temperatures, and low humidity, these embers can invade deep into urban areas, starting hundreds, if not thousands of spot fires in areas that would have otherwise been far beyond the reach of the main fire. And the prevailing weather isn't the only factor that affects just how far these embers can be spread. Because once a fire grows large enough, the fire's own convection current can carry these embers and loft them deep into unburnt areas. But when the fire hits a low fuel hazard zone, for example, urban areas, the fire's energy release decreases, reducing the height to which embers are lofted. This reduction in ember lofting height would in turn act to reduce the time period that embers are airborne prior to returning to the ground, resulting in both ember transport distance and the number of embers self-extinguishing being reduced. And this would greatly increase the number of short to medium range spot fires. And it is this mechanism that is suspected to be the cause of an enormous ember attack which impacted Canberra in 2003. A fire that would ultimately destroy 488 houses and take the lives of four people. And this is not the only time where an event like this has happened. In fact, it has been seen many times before, not just in Australia, but also in many other fire-prone places around the world. For example, this image was captured by the Landsat 8 satellite during the California campfire, one of the most destructive and deadly fires in California's history. With more than 1,800 buildings destroyed and 85 lives lost. And on closer inspection, it's easy to see the many spot fires created by embers and the dramatic effect the ember attack can have by carrying flames deep into urban areas. And it is for this reason that firebrands have been found to be the main cause of house loss during bushfires. But to understand exactly why they can be responsible for such a large amount of damage and destruction, we first need to understand where do they come from and how are they formed? The Australian bush 
is no stranger to fire. In fact, many of our species of vegetation have evolved to incorporate fire into their life cycle. But with this adaption comes an increased tendency to create embers when they burn. In fact, it has been said that the spotting potential of Australian native eucalypt forests is unparalleled in terms of both density and distance. However, not all fuels will burn in the same way, because very fine fuels such as leaves and fibrous bark will burn quickly with an open flame. This means that these fuels are unlikely to be responsible for long distance spotting, as they will quickly use up their fuel and self-extinguish before the deposited longer distances from the fire. But their flaming nature does make them very effective at starting spot fires over shorter distances ahead of the fire front. Whereas heavier fuels such as twigs and heavier barks will often burn without an open flame in a smouldering combustion. This means that they are able to stay alight for much longer as they are being transported well ahead of the fire front. And therefore this makes these fuels much better suited to long distance spotting. But it is not enough for these embers to be simply cast ahead of the fire, because they also need to find a fuel bed that can be ignited by smouldering embers. And one of the main factors that will affect just how successful these embers are in starting new fires is moisture. Because spot fire intensity will gradually increase as the moisture content of fine dead fuels decreases from 10% down to critically dry levels as low as 2 or 3%. And so if they do find an available fuel bed when they land, they can start a spot fire. And if this fire is near a home or a building, then it is possible for that spot fire to set the building alight. And this is not the only way in which embers can set fire to a building, because they can start building fires even in the absence of outside fuels. And this occurs directly by penetration of the structure or lodgement against flammable components. And when embers do enter a building, they can easily set fuels inside that building on fire. And because of the flammable nature of the modern fuels we keep inside our homes and businesses, once a fire is ignited inside a building, it can take as little as a few minutes before that fire is able to build up, transition through flashover, and then quickly advance through the rest of the building. And under bad fire weather conditions, fire brigades are often stretched beyond their capacity to deal with these fires. Because ember attack doesn't necessarily just attack one house at a time. In fact, it will often reach deep into suburbs and towns, sharing large areas with these airborne incendiaries. And when this occurs, it is very unlikely that there will ever be enough firefighters or fire trucks available to protect every home. And these attacks can continue for many hours, even after the main fire front has passed through. And so all of this just goes to demonstrate that while the fire front is undeniably one of the most dangerous places you can be during a bushfire, the threat from ember attack is also a very real and present danger each year as the fire season returns to Australia.